These are true stories based on submissions from the BuzzFeed Unsolved Network audience. These are their encounters. So there is this really old cemetery, kind of in the middle of nowhere, just outside my small town. The cemetery supposedly has a witch buried somewhere in or around it, and legend has it if you lay on the grave at midnight, the witch will grab you and hold you in place for about a minute. My boyfriend, now husband, and some of our friends decided to go see if we could find the witch's grave. Once we got there, we started walking around to see if we could find anything. One of our friends was told that the grave was outside the furthest fence, so we went to check it out. As we were walking on the outside of the fence, which is a heavily wooded area, we could hear heavy footsteps behind us. At first we thought it was just one of us, so we all stopped, but the footsteps did not. We all just kind of played it off like we were crazy, so we went back into the cemetery to continue our search. I forgot to mention that one of our friends is sensitive to the supernatural and gets nosebleeds whenever there might be something around. So we all split up to keep looking, except I didn't leave my boyfriend. He stopped to check out a headstone that looked super old and creepy. I was just standing there looking around, and the next thing I know, I feel someone come up behind me and grab my hair and pull. I quickly spun around, and no one was there. Not even 10 seconds later, our friend who is sensitive to stuff comes running over and says we need to leave right now. I put my flashlight on him and his nose is bleeding bad, like dripping through his beard and onto his shirt bad. We all loaded up and left immediately. I don't know what he sensed, and I never asked, but whatever it was, I don't think it was very good. Who knows, maybe the witch was after us because we were looking for her. When I was younger, I was on my way to my grandma's house with my mom and brother, who was three at the time. When we passed the cemetery, my brother pointed at the oak tree near the entrance and said, that's where Granny's buried. My mother was horrified because Granny was her grandmother and my brother had never met her. She died two years before he was even born. My cousin also has vivid memories of spending time with said granny, but he also never met her. Spooky. It was a gloomy, cold, and rainy Sunday in February. We always drive past this old cemetery every Sunday on our way to church. And every Sunday I would see him, a sad old man with a red checkered flannel and a red trucker hat smoking a cigarette. He always looked so sad, which is why I always noticed him, always staring down at the grave underfoot, never showing his face. The grave, I assumed, belonged to his deceased wife. One Sunday, I said, it's so sad seeing that old man. He visits that grave every Sunday without fail. He must have really loved her. My husband and daughter that were in the car both looked and said, well, what are you talking about? There's no one there. Yes, there is, I said. He's standing right there in the red flannel and trucker hat. Okay, whatever you say, says my husband, as both he and my daughter laugh nervously. Y'all are silly. I don't know why you're acting like that. He's sad, I replied. No one else said anything, but I was determined to prove them wrong and myself right. So the next day, I decided to pay a little visit to the gravesite and take a picture. I parked a good 10 yards away. It was so cold that day, so rainy, and so dark for only being 3 p.m. As I walked to the grave, I noticed there weren't any cigarette butts anywhere. Eight yards. Seven, six, five, four yards and still no signs. I finally made it to the gravestone and saw his picture on it. The same checkered shirt, same trucker hat, same everything. I ran for my life and never looked back. And since that day, I have yet to see the old man in the checkered shirt and trucker hat again. When I was 14, we moved into a trailer park. We lived in this old trailer that had mold in the ceilings and the floor would sink in in some parts of the house. The first few days there wasn't that bad, but then things started happening. I noticed we would get cold spots in random parts of the trailer, mostly my room and the living room. We also had a small tight hallway, and every time I would walk through it, it felt like someone was behind me. We are a Catholic family, so I had a picture of the Virgin Mary hanging up in my room by the door. But every once in a while, I would wake up and find it on the floor. We also had this old school blender that required you to really press on the button for it to turn on, and it would randomly turn on mostly after 10 p.m. The buttons on that blender were in good condition, and they never really got stuck. Sometimes after 3 a.m., we would hear footsteps on the ceiling, starting from the living room, going past the hallway, and ending up in my parents' master bedroom. 
One night, the lights went off, and me and my three siblings ran to our parents' room. We heard the same loud footsteps from the ceiling rushing towards my parents' room. The door had cracked open, and my mom told us to close our eyes. Recently, I'm 26 now, she said that that night she saw a dark, long figure standing by the door. Years later, we talked to one of the ladies that was managing the park, and she showed us an old album of what the trailer park used to be. It was a cemetery, and that explained everything. Once we moved out, we didn't experience anything else. I've lived in haunted houses my whole life, but this was by far the worst. When I was in the fifth grade, me, my gram, and my sisters went to visit my pop pop's grave. He had died about a year and a half before in the hospital. So while our gram was taking a few minutes alone, we were supposed to have been heading back to the car. I saw this woman who looked to be about 20, and she seemed really sad, so I went to make sure she was all right. She was wearing a red dress and a hat, but had no shoes on. I asked her who she was crying for, and she told me it was for herself. I explained to her why we were all there that day, and told her it was okay to miss the people we had buried. She and I talked for a good 15 minutes, and sometimes her answers didn't quite make sense, but I ignored it just thinking it was because I was young. It wasn't until I heard my family calling for me that I realized we had been moving further and further away from my family. I told her I had to go, but hoped she'd be happier soon. I looked over to where my family was, and when I looked back, I saw that a chunk of her head was missing. As I scurried away, I felt her touch me and whisper in my ear, even though she was a few yards away, saying that she could make the pain stop sooner. I booked it to the car, and once I was in with the doors locked, I glanced back to where she was and saw her walking through a tree and knelt before a tombstone that was near my pups. Then she just faded away. My sisters still insist that there was no one else in that cemetery, but I know she was there. One evening, I was driving home from getting ice cream with my friends. It was summer, and it was just getting dark. To get from the ice cream place to my house, you have to pass an intersection across from the cemetery. As I pulled up to the light, I went to turn right. My car turned and my headlights flashed on a man in a gray suit walking in the middle of the road right in front of my car. I slammed my brakes and swerved out of the lane to avoid hitting him. However, when I looked back, he was nowhere to be found. All that I could see was the eerie glow of streetlights illuminating the rows of headstones in my rearview mirror.